Hello everyone! Due to popular demand, I wanted to start a minimalism series dedicated to students all over the world. I have been into minimalism a lot during the past couple of years and I guarantee it has changed my life for the better as a student and as a person. The studying community is very prone to shopping impulses, new products, planners and apps, so I wanted to show you the 10 stationary items I do not buy anymore and that made no difference whatsoever in my life. Although I occasionally buy stationary items for giveaways, gifts for family and friends, or to create new videos for all of you stationary lovers, I have been very particular towards what I buy and how I actually use those things. First of all, I stopped buying pre-made or branded planners. Even before I started using digital planning, I had stopped buying planners for more than a year. For planning on paper, I buy a good quality notebook and use the bullet journaling method or simply invest in a planner like the Filofax that lasts for years on end. For that type of planner, all you have to do is buy the refills or even make your own. The second item I stopped buying are bundles or packs of stationary items in general. Every time I want to buy a new pen, I buy only one pen, in the color that I want, instead of buying the whole package. Sometimes the sales are so enticing, but you end up with dozens of pens locked away in the cabinet and you have no idea what to do with them. The third item I stopped buying was design or pretty notebooks or sessionary that had no other purpose than being used as decoration. Most of the times I was around the stationery store, I found this notebook with an incredible cover. I knew I hated the paper, or the way the lines had been printed, or something else about it, but I still wanted to buy it, because I thought it would look so nice on my shelf. Now I only buy functional and minimal looking stationery items that I know I would love to use, and are resistant and nice looking enough for me to not get bored of them. The fourth item is a big pencil case. I took a lot of pens and stuff to college in my earlier years and I spent way too much time picking between different colors or decorating stuff. I now prefer to grab two or three pens max, put them in a side pocket in my handbag and that's all I need to write notes for the whole day. Even if you carry a bigger pencil case with you, notice how almost invariably you are going to use the same items over and over again. I also stopped buying flashcards. These are pretty expensive in my country and I ended up finding other ways to produce the same results. A great way to do this with some paper is by using the folding method that Serena from Studying talks about in her channel, so I will link that video down below in case you're interested. Notepads have always been one of my pet peeves. They can be practical, but they can promote a lot of clutter since you use one piece of paper and then you either throw it away or file it somewhere while knowing you'll probably never look at it again. For tasks, I definitely prefer a simple bullet journaling system or simply doing it digitally. I delete simple to-do tasks as I write them in a digital notepad or simply schedule the tasks on my calendar or archive all of that in a bullet journal that also ends up serving other purposes. The seventh item is correction tape. I don't like the look of correction tape. I think it's a bulky item to keep in a pen case and I simply prefer to cross out the wrong words and write the correct form in front of it. You end up saving money and in my opinion a nicely crossed out word looks cleaner than that white strip on your notes. Another item on this list are paper post-it flags. These little guys look nice on their packaging, but as soon as you start flagging pages with them, you'll get a crumpled result. They get ripped in the process and aren't even that nice to write on. If I really need to flag pages in a textbook or notebook, I prefer to invest in a pack of sturdy, replaceable tabs that will last me for ages, since after I finish the book, I can just remove them and start flagging another book right away. I have had a package of Avery laminated tabs for 6 years and they are still good to go. Item number 9 is a laminated non-plastic binder. I know that these binders made out of cardboard aren't very common in the US, but at least in my country and I think most of Europe, they're one of the basic items for students. Although these binders are incredibly cheap, they will not last the entire academic year without whipped corners, a broken ring or two and an overall flimsy look that will force you to throw them away. 
I think it's smarter to buy a more expensive plastic binder that can last you for years, especially if you pick a nice minimalistic design. The last item on this list is the whole array of document wallets, single-purpose plastic folders, plastic envelopes and so on. Unless I was buying these to multi-purpose with different documents and use them as folders to transport documents otherwise stored in a filing system, then buying them to organize documents at home felt like a waste of plastic and money to me. I prefer to organize documents in binders and use one of these to carry them around with me if I need, instead of buying tons of these document wallets and use that as a foundation of my organization system. Before we end today's video, I want to talk a little bit more about Squarespace. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform to create your own website. You can create a beautiful website with award-winning templates to start your own business, blog, you name it. The best thing about Squarespace is that it's used by a wide range of creatives and people, from musicians, designers, lifestyle bloggers and more. The platform is all-in-one, so there's no need to install any program, patch or upgrade, so the process of designing your website is as simple as it can get. You also get 24-7 customer support, as well as a unique domain experience that's simple to set up and completely transparent. Go to squarespace.com slash Mariana to get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. And these are the 10 stationary items I don't buy anymore. Of course, everyone is different and I probably mentioned a couple of items that you think are fundamental in your life, but perhaps you're also starting to understand how easy it is to reevaluate the way you purchase your office supplies and the ways in which you can effectively revamp your organization system without buying more or wasting more money. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and I will see you next week. Bye!